with uh, legendary wrestler Tracy Smothers, who was also known as uh, Freddy Joe Floyd in his WWE days. Um, you were telling me you actually spent some time in WWF um, before it was WWE, around the time David Schultz had his uh, incident with John Sosa. What, what about that first run? Okay. That with David, when it happened with David, I was working at CWA, Jerry Jarrett, uh, Jerry Lawler on, on the territory, on the company, uh, things like that. And all I remember is, like I said, there, there, there was no social media, there was no cell phones, there was no uh, internet, there was no uh, cable. Uh, you know, in that time frame there when Eddie Mansfield did what he did, and David did that, and you look up, and who's in the dressing room? David Schultz. Wow, that was really, everybody was just tripping, was freaked out, you know, couldn't believe it. And David kept to himself and everything. And uh, the story I was, I was telling earlier, uh, we'll never forget that. Boy, he was a badass man. He was a, everybody respected him so much for doing that and just sticking up for the business and knew that he wouldn't suck up to nobody. I mean, that's just point blank. You know, he's around Jackson, Tennessee. Man, I'm, I'm from around uh, Nashville, Springfield. And I knew who he was long before. You know, man, I mean, he knew who he was. Just, that wasn't just wrestling it. You know, but, uh, David, David uh, uh, suplex one of the Batten twins on the floor. Get competitive match and did everything he did, but you know, it made him look good. You know, it was devastating. Vicious, was so vicious here. But the next week, I'm working Randy Savage on TV. Randy suplexes me up with 11 million dollars. Like million dollars. I went up to him afterwards. And, uh, and I said, I said, Randy, thank you so much. This is all the place. Help them all the book, get ready to do the deal. Lose your town, go to WWF. All that David's coming in. Randy's leaving, you know what I mean? You know, like that. And, uh, so he's kind of falling up with uh, David there. And everything. And he goes, brother, never, ever think somebody that suplexes you on the floor. You know, you, know, you got a point. He goes, and David, he was walking around the corner. He goes, right, Schultz, something like that. And I don't think he heard him. He goes, yeah, right. He kept going. Who did I work with that night? David in Nashville. Uh, the old fairgrounds. The dress groups in Quebec. This is going to be interesting. I just bought, listen, I mean, he's a beast, man. A man that uh, just was a raw bone old country boy. And he gets a tough son of a bitch. Boy. But it made me look good, which was hard to do. And of course, I didn't get to thank you after the next day in uh, Jackson, Tennessee. Uh, they run out once a month on Sundays. You blink at me, give me the. I was like, yes, that was awesome. You know, you just remember those things. But then, uh, yeah, I think his first paycheck, man, I'm not sure, he didn't like it. Gone, quit. <laughs> he went to see him again. And, and, uh, I don't I don't know if he ever, maybe he worked some, I don't know, you know, but uh, he was going out there. I can't I think we got paid on Tuesdays, and then it switched later to Wednesdays. Uh, yeah, I think that's his first paycheck. How did you like working for Jerry Jarrett? Oh, uh, yeah, I learned a lot, and everybody that's anybody went through there. You know, and all the top guys and from the 70s on, you know, and, and, you know, working six days a week, twice on Sunday or Saturday, you know. Uh, you were in, say, Memphis or Louisville, Evansville, Monday, we had and Wednesday. Thursday would probably be a spot show either around Nashville or, or around, or they'd have a spot show down around Memphis because you had TV on Saturday morning, live TV way before Raw ever was. Live, you know what I mean? You know, all that. And you no know, Raw. But, uh, and every Monday night was Memphis. But you were in those towns for Four times a month, doing TV four times a month, you had to change up everything you do. And they keep heat on the heels with something I don't feel like they do anymore. But the Jarrett's and Lawler always preach that. And that's why they stayed in business so long. And, and, and you think about it, you're going in the same venue four times a month. So Nashville was the first three Saturdays of every month. And the last uh, Saturday was Jack, uh, Jones Pearl, Arkansas. You know, things like that. But, but they'd always have a, a Saturday, a Friday and Saturday down around Memphis. There, you know, uh, uh, Saturdays always. You know, too. But so there'd be Nashville running in a town around Mississippi, Arkansas, or something like that, somewhere around Memphis. Uh, uh, you learn a lot. You learn a lot. And uh, that, that was always my home base where I lived. And anywhere I had to go, I worked other territories, but I always come home and never look for someone to burn the home. Uh, overseas tours, anything. It was always flexible with them. You'd give them two weeks, leave them good terms, you could always come back. You know, and, and so, and it's, it's a who's who seems to come out of there. I mean, anybody that knows the business, you know, it's, it's just, I mean, my Lord, uh, Hope kind of got to start there. Uh, 
you know, Austin Rock, you know what I mean, you know, original gorgeous George, worked the old Evans yeah. Coliseum, it's around wrestling. Uh, still is, uh, for over 100 years, 115 years or so. Now you talk about how tough uh, David Schultz was. You have a bit of a tough guy reputation too. Uh, where does that come from? I don't know. I can't hardly walk. <laughs> hey, I watched your video, man. Oh, Annie, my God. Oh, uh, no, no. Uh, anything if I ever had to do is because I had to do it or was a take up a friend or, or just had It's messed up when that happens with the boys, yeah. and it does happen because you're my brother. You know, but I'll tell you this: so in uh, the day, guys could be not get along, right? They always do business. They didn't bring their uh, dirty laundry into the building. You didn't do it. And, and you know what? Another thing too. No, <laughs> maybe broke down somewhere over here. This guy might have you. I might have major heat. Whatever it is, it is. You can talk to him. You can help him. Because you might need him the next day. Yeah. He might be on top of the car and you're getting paid off of what he helps draw. You know what I mean? You know, that kind of stuff. Dude. Because you just did it because of business. You know, I never knew what he did. And, and also, too, some went down a riot, a fight in the crowd, the boys do. The guys didn't like each other side by side. I tell them about Blue Jack and I, uh, uh, Pitbull Anthony. They didn't like each other and they, they took the whole dressing room to break them up one night clean. So I said, tired, I couldn't help for a bit. Next night, a mark sucked on something. Somebody sucker punched Mikey Wilbur. The first two, I told Tom and Donner, the first two that was out kicking ass, and, and, and just mowing, rock them, sock them, robots. So it was Anthony and Nucci, side by side, I'm in a fight. And I stood up on the gaming table, on the, on the, on the announcer table, I said, Tommy, look at that. Two motherfuckers trying to kill each other last night. Took the whole dress and pulled them off. Then everybody's picking up. And they're apologizing to each other, crying, drinking, you know, partying that day. I'm sorry, man. This is we're all like, making fun of them, you know, picking at them. Going, oh, you, you motherfuckers trying to stab each other. You know, Tommy, with that voice. Trying to stab each other, shoot each other down there. Y'all go, go get a robe or what? You know, and it's, it's a good time. So that's the way it was. And that's the way it should be. And I hope, you hope it'll get that way again. The so guys out there have respect for each other. And nobody mess with nobody's old lady. Fuck that, man. You didn't steal, okay? You didn't do those kind of things. That was taboo in this business. And you didn't you didn't mess with nobody's kids. You didn't disrespect their, their, their wife, girlfriend, fiance, whoever it was. You did not do that, no matter what. He, you didn't bring your personal stuff into this business. Because if you didn't do it, you were gone. The guys that didn't like each other with the back, you know, things like that. It was just a cold in ethics, and it's the way it needs to be. So tell these guys. I mean, it, 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 it is, you know, it's just the way it is. You put your body in the other guy's hands to take care of it. I'm sure, we make everything look good. No, but, but you, those things I said there, you, 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 you preached that, you practiced that, everybody helped that. You just didn't, it was things that, man, that's with anything, uh, the old school way of thinking. Man, the dressing rooms a lot of times didn't connect. And you, you got your finish one time, and, and you saw him in the ring. Just winged it, caught it out there, and you know, like some of the guys were talking about that I talked about, the veteran guys that made this business. You, you clean your ears out to some of them. I'm all ears, just called. I'll try to be there. That's what you would do, and that's the way it ought to be. But, but the guys got to get the, the respect, you know what I mean? And, 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 uh, it's it's, it's got to hand it down, you know. You see, uh, I see a lot. Uh, 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 <coughs> Guys need to watch the other matches. You ever notice that? You do because they repeat a lot. You see a lot of that. You, you really do. And you're just like, man, you know. I preach to the boys when on the SOS. They were doing uh, West Impact Pro, Joey Crunch. And I just preach to them. Watch the monitor. We got a monitor. Watch it so you don't repeat. Because and even when you're going over what you're doing, you do make sure, hey, nobody's doing certain, certain moves. You need nobody's signature move for a high spot. Or, 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 or finish for a high spot. Things are okay. Do it all, you know, and, and we didn't, you know, because the card and then the main event mat, uh, uh, earlier matches went shorter. And now you go to a lot of them and make a long because they're trying hard, or, you know, you know, but somebody's got to be on them times because you got to realize the people and you got to work with the people in the crowd, not the people in the, uh, uh, in the back. You know what I mean? You know, and all 
those things, and, and especially if you're running every month, every two weeks, or every week, or every three months, or six months, or twice a year, you want to leave with a good taste in your mouth. And I know it sounds crazy, but I just think that you know, your money was always in the kids, and you never get nothing when you couldn't bring your wife and kid, your kids to the building. And other people bring their families up there because you, know, you didn't cuss, you didn't do those kind of things. If you did, it meant something. It was a big deal, you know. And, uh, I mean, but uh, the moves, the things the guys are doing, is incredible. Uh, athletes. And, uh, hey. Good to see ya. Uh, how you been? You all right? Yes. Miss you. All right. All right. But, uh, I remember she first started. But, um, all those things I did because the money was the kids coming in. You kept it affordable. When they come in, buy a lot of concessions, buy a lot of merch, company merch, the boys' merch, everything. You know, and, 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 and just, that's just how you did it. You treated it like survival. You know, and, uh, you got to check territories, pay taxes, raise a family, you know, places like that. And, uh, be anywhere, It'd be a home base, like I did that there. But I had to leave other places and leave my family and all, you know, and, and, and travel a lot more overseas. Uh, uh, all Japan used to take about 16 guys. New Japan used to take about a dozen, 14. And a couple of shoot groups take three or four, you know. Uh, and uh, number 10 rooms. 10 rooms take about four or five guys. FMW took about eight, ten guys. IWA, Japan, about eight, ten guys. It was a lot. And now there's less places to go and a lot more guys. To make, you know, I see that. I see a lot of guys talented. You watch the ones that made business. I'm not saying that, that style is going to You've got to mix it all in together, right? You know? And that they do. But the, the codes and ethics, you still got to. To, uh, score two points in basketball, you're gonna shoot, right? You know, you know what I mean? You see guys do great things in the shine, dude. They don't even cover them or nothing. And, 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 I mean, I, you kind of mark them up. People know they're not gonna get beat. Even if you used to, they take kind of you know, kick out one, you know, and really toward the pitch to two counts. And I mean, just little things. It's a, the, the little things is, is what needs to be more in there, in between other things. The bar goes so high you know, of everything that they do. Some of the best athletes in the world are in the ring and doing what we do, aren't they? You've seen it. I've seen guys that are athletes in other sports. Whatever you kind of sports you want, man. Football, baseball, basketball, hockey, martial arts, boxers, amateur wrestling. We couldn't do this business. Because one thing, do take a bump in the ring. I've seen guys, fat ass guys, and you've probably seen it too. They, could, they took one bump in the ring, and I go, man, this ain't for me. They were hurt through the back out, whatever that did. And, uh, because every bump you take in the ring, it's like a car hitting you behind you driving it 25 miles an hour. And that's just a basic flat back bump. You know this. Imagine the other bumps. You know what I mean? Like that. And, and anything you do. You know, the, the apron beats you up. The ropes cable beats you up. Take it away. It's, you know, it's like a car ride. So, and, and, and at least in the head, you know, duh, I'm a poster boy for that. Oh, my God. You know, but when I got uh, 43, my body started breaking down physically. I started being, how old are you? 35. Yeah. yeah. When I got about 33, I was like, Ooh. 26, I was like, I ain't young anymore. 33, I was like, Ooh, this is getting tough. Yeah. When I got close to 40, I tried hard because I was like, oh my God, almost 40 years old. I got 43, I just woke up one day and I was fucked. <laughs> Can I say that there? <laughs> I was screwed. But, uh, you know, it, it, I tell guys too, get in the jacuzzi, sauna, whirlpool, you know, take care of yourself, your body, eat right. You are what you eat, as I say, you know, drink a ton of water. Do that DDP yoga. That is good stuff, man. Because of body trauma, you know. Here's what's, what's rough on guys, too, and I'll finish you. Uh, a lot of times, you've got a long trip. You guys in Canada, y'all do those tours. You can be in six, eight, ten hours in a van or something like that. And, and, and travel, wrestle, no shower, right? And, and then go another six, eight hours or something, and you're dang tired when you can't sleep good and you get to a shower, you, you got a damn room, then you wake up and go to the train. And that's what they do to travel alone. You know? And nowadays, flying, there's so many delays. We're going to go here. Newark has always been a hard airport to get in and out of. 
last time, last year when I come here, uh, I lived 13 hours, 12, 13 hours from here. I'd have got home four hours before I, I had three delays and stuff, you know, I mean, it's crazy. And, you know, it's a lot more traffic out, traveling's hard, it's, it's conditioning really, physically everything you do. Uh, it just awesome. Car, cool stuff, airplane, so old guys, young guys especially, the veterans already know that, you know. Take those words that he thinks we're saying about the codes and ethics of what we do. And I know it's all changed, it's, you know, everything involves, you know, but, but it's basically you know, coming back to the same animal you know, to draw money. You know. and, and nobody can keep faith no more. They know everything going on. My God! You know? Think about magic, you knew Houdini was a magician, but you didn't know how he did it, right? We let that go, what, 25 years ago? <laughs> Thanks for having me, Hannibal. Thank you. Enjoy Thank it. you. And do you want to I tell us uh, your your Twitter or your Facebook for anyone who uh, wants to just, follow you? Uh, Tracy Smothers. Uh, it's one with a guy, two pictures of a guy, young guy. That's me. I just have Facebook. That's it. Uh, I'm not on Twitter. And that, and then, uh, there's a few others, or maybe something, whatever. And there's one of me be standing there like that. The old Jack Briscoe pose. Uh, <laughs> the young guy. That's me. All right. Thanks a lot, and we hope to catch up with you uh, in more detail sometime. Nice to meet you.